guy guy to basically oh i'm just gonna nair i'll attack you give you a jab block and just dash back watch you roll away get the flare blitz but he is up against cloud now i don't know if you know this but beast thinks this character loses to cloud he has quite a bit of a cloud problem he thought enhanced who was a you know a high higher level of a cloud up at xanadu and he almost etched it out but we're going to see how he's going to deal against this Nightmare character so far. And B's looking for the back air there off that down throw means he's not going to find the combo. He's trying to get this Whirlpool started, but Cloud is not a character it works on. So unfortunately, that drag down down air re-grab reset combo is instead going to give Mo another opportunity to reset to neutral, but Beast's pressure is relentless. He still finds that corner situation anyway. And now with Ivysaur, he's primed for a possible stock here. Yeah, and taking the jump, having the situation in the trap, but no Mo. Getting Beast in the jungle situation with the up airs. He's trying to continue with the Nair as well. A very excellent move in Cal's Cloud's kit to kind of just keep your opponent juggling. And there's that up smash, almost doing him in. Can Beast come back down to the ground. I, I mean, he certainly can, but he's going to have to go to ledge to do it, and now he's stuck in the corner against Cloud Snivy. I'm going to be real. I think Charizard is maybe the worst character Pokemon of the three against Cloud, just because while you're fast, while you do kill early, you still don't have a big disjoint, and you're a big body. Cloud Sword can contest you, and once you get put in the air, it is so hard for that character to land against the well, big you know, Buster it's, Sword. It's just this little demon in your head, and something that Beast has a problem with, like, he loves relying on the Charizard as like his main last result, and he doesn't need to feel pressured into this. He has the whole Pokemon trainer kit to work with. I get that this is your comfort character, you want to stay on it, but logically, you know, you should stay like the Iris Sword, the Squirrel to start off with, and eventually switch to the Charizard when you're in a dire situation, or around these kill percents, because well, he's definitely going to find it I mean, soon. the fact that he swapped with the Charizard as soon as the stock got taken, now he's taken 85 more for it, Snivy, and... I mean, he needs to figure something out fast. He needs to get the stock. If he goes down three stocks to one, I think we might be Eat. taking a breather in game two. But instead, he's going to find that back throw, going to take the stock, and Snivy Beast has got some life in him yet. Yeah. Beast still trying to get this lead shot going. It's very strong. Trying to get the back air cheese as well with the Charizard. You know, he loves to go for the Hood Classic. And that was gorgeous, dude. The mm -hmm. climb hazard through the stage from Mo. Beautiful spacing from him holding in to ride up the ledge there, find that pressure, but Beast not able to let him reset him reset to neutral by keeping this advantage day glowing and the frame breath let flame breath, the flamethrower gonna keep it on the pressure Ooh. on. Beast is starting to make the adjustments and bring this game back. Yeah, he called him out on the dash back there with the jabs and trying to keep him in the corner. Now Charizard is kind of really good when he has you in the situation of the lead ledge. He has a flame breath to kind of he stall you the, in. He caught the limit with that flamethrower beautiful stuff from beast it feels like right now what we're seeing is beast just kind of better playing though right he's just out adapting and you're watching the download in real time as beast starts to realize mo's habits what he's looking for and he's like okay i'm just gonna go charizard because i can now now that the game's even maybe i'll swap back to squirtle if i try and get a combo get some damage on but my combos are gonna work better because i know what all the options you're trying to do out of a disadvantage yeah two solid nares from squirtle here looking to put more we got the ladder combo and there's a corner carry and yep there's a back throw trying to mash that down there on the shield it's not gonna work out and then we might be seeing the f splash but no the, the up beat catches him unfortunately the down tilt to continue that situation from beast was gorgeous is forced Mo to jump to get out of the situation. He got juggled, right? Forced kind of off stage and all the way back. That close to ledge, Climb Hazard isn't going to snap. They buff the ledge snap of it, but not that much. Yeah. And when you have to rise past it, Charizard's big, big giant wingspan snivy is going to come and usher you right into yeah, the Yeah, definitely. Class, so. Un unlike this first stock, Beast was definitely, you know, this is the basically the warm-up, essentially. He was tunneling vision just a, just a little yeah. tiny bit, and you could tell in those second stocks, was, the gears were slowly turning the third stock, and he's like, Honestly, oh, he yeah. he found that it's back throw together. and then breathed. Basically. And when he took that breath between those stocks, he just all of the pieces of the puzzle just clicked. Right? It's like it's like if you dump a puzzle out and they all land, right, in and make the jigsaw for you. And so we're going to see be starting on the Charizard here for game number two. He evidently figured out something he liked with that character. And so going to opt for maybe the least traditional start, unless you're watching. Yeah, we're going to have to look at this thing. in a, another perspective, pretty much, because this is no ordinary Pokemon trainer. Yeah. This is Beastard playing that Charizard. He has been having a very phenomenal tech chase kind of going on with the jabs setting it up as well. And one thing I want to point out as well about this character, his tilts. 
His tilts are pretty crazy, right? Oh, his buttons are absurd, Sniper. They do so much damage, take so much stage control. Like, that back air just did 15, put him Ooh. all the way off stage, and the tipper, 60 buff, that killed it 80! That killed it 80! Charge is like a heavy sortie, but he will he will kill so early with that tipper. It, like, just be spacing, too, with his character is immaculate. And you're watching now, right, as he kind of is starting to utilize the fear that is present when you play against a super heavy to really just make Mo oh. get scared, right? Push these preemptive buttons, make some mistakes, yeah. and he's taking advantage just like that. This, this is what always happens. I see it happen every time. Beast, you know, scrambles a little bit in the game one, game two, three stock download. And that's what's happening here. He's taking advantage of Cloud's linear recovery of that disadvantage as well, setting himself up so he can get those down airs and the down smash frames that we saw in the last game. And still, he's trying to set up as well for this corner situation. And we just saw the beast special, that falling up air to pressure shield, maybe try and get a combo starter if it lands. We're just, that being said, now Mo finding the grab, trying to find this cross slash, forget a stock, not get three stocks, the cloud back air, his neutral tool, his advantage, his disadvantage, his whole nine yards, and Ivy gonna take it, but now you have to take yeah. two more, get away from that Ivy sword down there, and he can't find it. Beast taking it 2-0, and just